All right, ladies and gents, in today's video, it's going to be all about fishing mini jigs for trout. I'll go over rods, reels, line, tackle, everything you need to know. And once we get through all that, I'm going to go to the lake and show you exactly how I fish them. Let's see how we do. First thing we want to figure out is, is why we even want to fish mini jigs. Well, um, trout, like uh, most animals, are predators, and uh, they're going to be more likely to go after something alive and moving than something that's that's dead and just laying on the on the uh, bottom of the lake. As you guys know, you know, bait and weight fishing, you always got to have something floating uh, to get trout. You can't use uh, necessarily uh, cut dead fish like for catfish because it's just a different type of fish. And trout, since they are predators, have a, have a prey drive. So if they see something moving, it gets their, their interest, whether it's drop shot, spinner, spoon, or these mini jigs. Now, the biggest thing I've noticed since uh, I started transitioning over uh, to drop shot and uh, throwing jigs and spoons more often than, say, bait and weight, is my catch rates went up, and also the quality of fish that I caught went way up. Uh, on average, I'm catching much bigger fish using uh, mini jigs, drop shot, or spoons uh, that I am just, just using an old bait and weight. And that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with bait and weight. As you guys know, I, I love me some bait and weight. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with having a bait and weight rod out and then working the other one uh, to see what you can get. Because uh, more times than not, what gets hot is uh, something moving. And uh, that's where the jigs come in. So let's go over the gear you're going to need. This is the most important thing for mini jigging. Uh, we'll go over rods and reels. All right, now let's talk about rods. Now, when you're fishing mini jigs for trout, you're going to want an ultralight rod. And uh, I would suggest something at least seven feet long. Uh, usually seven to eight foot is, is a good area. Most of the, the mini jig rods uh, that are specifically designed for that are seven foot six. Um, a lot of my rods are eight foot, but I do have some seven sixes that I use as well. Um, uh, but the, the main reason for that is uh, casting distance because uh, these mini jigs are so light um, you got to get it out at least you know 20 30 feet out there uh, to where the trout are or at least right past to where the trout are so you can you can bring a natural presentation right into them uh, in the water column uh, so uh, I'll start off with some some rods uh, I have several picked out um, I'll start off with with some that are uh, more on the budget end and then I'll show you some that I have acquired that are on the uh, way more expensive end. <laughs> so the the first rod I want to show you is uh, one you've probably seen before if you watch the channel is the uh, the Shakespeare micro series. Uh, this is a seven foot six uh, fast action rod. Uh, the cool thing about these is they work well for just about everything you're doing for trout whether it's bait and weight throwing spoons or even mini jigs. These are really really good mini jig rods but the really cool thing about them is they're about 20 bucks. <laughs> They're very inexpensive and still a really, really nice rod. You can get them over at Walmart. I saw them today on Amazon. Um, but you're going to want at least a 7 foot or the biggest they make in this is a 7.6 and that's what this one is. Uh, but uh, uh, every time I'm at Walmart and I see these, I always pick one up uh, just, just to have them because they're really, really good rods and uh, you can't beat the price. I mean, it's, it's just nuts uh, for 20 bucks to get a rod this nice. Uh, it is a real real bargain all right the next step up is the Akuma SST ultralight uh, this one's an eight foot uh, again a fast action rod um, and just to explain for those that don't know uh, the difference between fast and moderate action uh, fast action rods are just a little bit stiffer uh, moderate action uh, have a little bit more whip at the tip uh, and, and honestly that comes down to personal preference um, most guys that throw mini jigs on the regular uh, like fast action rods uh, I kind of go back and forth um, I have a, a dragonfly which I'll show you in a minute that's a moderate action that I really like uh, but I also like these fast action rods too 
Um, but this Akuma SST is, is an excellent mini jig rod. Uh, for a fast action rod, it does have a little bit of a softer tip. Um, and the price point on these, these are about 50 to 70 bucks. So you can find them on sale, you can usually get them around 50 bucks. Excellent buy for this, this, uh, the type of rod this is. Uh, and it's a really, really good mini jig rod. All right, and the next one up is an American Spirit uh, eight foot ultralight uh, fast action rod. Uh, this one's got the split grip. Uh, you don't need this for mini jigging. All this does is really just shave off a little bit of weight. Um, uh, so I have split grip and full grip rods. Um, uh, they both work equally fine. Uh, it's just, you know, comes down to personal preference and, and, and things like that I've said already. But uh, 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 this is a fast action rod, like I said. Uh, really, really good mini jig rod. Um, but this one's a little bit of a step up in price. This one is about 90 to 100 bucks. Uh, this one is very similar to the Californian. Uh, uh, Californian is, is sold at Turner's, um, and so are these. Uh, uh, and a lot, a lot of guys that, that uh, uh, throw mini jigs on the regular use the Californian uh, uh, and love it. Um, I love this American Spirit. It's a great, great little rod. Again, it's a, it's a fast action rod, uh, but it works great for mini jigs too. All right, this next one is one you've seen on the channel quite a bit is my Phoenix Dragonfly. Now this is a moderate action rod. It's eight foot, it's ultra light, um, split grip as you can see, uh, but it's got a lot more whip at the tip. And uh, this rod really felt comfortable in my hands when I started playing with it. In fact, I, I got an opportunity to use uh, a fellow subscribers uh, one day and I fell in love with it. So that's why I went out and bought one in the, uh, the moderate uh, platform. Uh, and I've, I've done really well, I've caught Lots and lots of fish mini jigging with this rod. Uh, as you can see, I have it paired with a, a Shimano Vanford uh, 2000 HG. Uh, really great setup, really light. Uh, but again, this one is is getting spendy. This is a, about a $200 rod, and the reel's uh, a little over $200. So um, when I bought this, it was kind of when I decided that, hey, uh, I really like doing this. I want to see how good I can get at it and, and really put in some time into it. And so I decided to put some money into it and, uh, and, and bought this setup and really, really happy with it. Now this last setup is uh, my favorite. It's newer, but I absolutely love it. This is the Katana 7.6 uh, Ultralight. Uh, it's, it's kind of a, a, a blend uh, between a, a fast and a moderate. It's, it's, it's stiff, but it's got a lot of bounce or whip at the tip. And I paired it with a uh, uh, Shimano Vanquish 1000. Uh, just awesome setup. Awesome setup. It's super light. It makes that uh, that uh, Phoenix Vanquish setup uh, feel like it's 10 pounds heavier. This thing just doesn't weigh anything, uh, which really comes in handy because I do a lot of when I fish. I uh, I usually have one bait and weight going, and the rest of the time I'm on my feet, uh, drop shot and jigging or throwing spoons, uh, and that can wear you out. Uh, over eight hours <laughs> so uh, I opted for some lighter gear uh, and and this stuff is is nice it is really nice but the trade-off is is it's spendy uh, this is this is near a thousand dollar setup uh, so it, it, if you really get into it and really want to spend some money on some real nice stuff this is what it was suggested to me this is what I suggest to you I absolutely love it uh, the way it fishes the way it handles the fish it's just amazing but it ain't cheap <laughs> so that's something to be considered uh the other thing to consider is when you're out there and you're going to start this up uh realize that you don't have to have that stuff um there are guys veteran anglers that i fish with that uh, uh slay fish on mini jigs and they use budget gear they don't have any of the expensive fancy stuff like that you don't have to have it it's 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 a it's a want more than a need um uh, you can get the job done and have a blast uh, on on that uh, that Shakespeare micro series and and any spinning reel. Uh, so so don't don't get too worried about about the the rod and reel. Just as long as you have a ultralight rod, at least seven foot long, uh, fast action or moderate action, and a spinning reel, good to go. Now we'll talk about some reels. All right, guys. Now I'm going to show you some of the the reels that uh, I use for mini jigging uh, and they're at different price points 
Um, we'll start off with, with something that's, that's a little less expensive, but really, really good. This is a Daiwa Legalis 1000 LT. Uh, outstanding reel. Uh, really, really good reel. Uh, and they, they run between uh, 50 and 70 bucks. Um, and you can find them. It, it just depends on if you can find them on sale or not. But you can get these sometimes a real good deal on wow. these. Uh, around 50 bucks. Um, but the only difference between um, uh, really the legalis and these other two is is the weight um this one's just a little bit heavier but it's a great great smooth reel got an outstanding drag uh here we got the the vanford uh, 2000 hg uh really awesome reel uh super light i believe they're about five ounces uh but it's significantly more expensive and then all the way up to the uh the shimano vanquish uh and this thing is is awesome it's a uh uh handmade or hand assembled i should say uh extremely smooth but this the price on this thing is out of sight compared to the other reels um, and you can get even cheaper reels than than uh, this one that will do the job just fine but uh, i recommend uh these are are thousand series this one's a 2000 but the only difference with the the vanford from the 1000 to 2000 is the size of the spool so this basically just holds more line uh, the 1000 series is the exact same frame. It's just got a smaller spool on it. Uh, you can even get a 500 series reel, uh, and those work fine. Um, or, or even a 2000 series reel. It's a, it's a little bit big, but uh, it will get the job done. Uh, and if you want to uh, really get into it, I, I, I recommend uh, uh, staying around a 1000 series. But uh, uh, these are all reels that will work. These are the reels I use. Um, and, and you can use any reel similar or, or go out and get the same. All right, now we're going to talk about what I believe is the most important thing if you're going to be fishing mini jigs in your gear is your line. Um, uh, there are two lines that are that are uh, probably the, the most prominent that I've seen. Uh, you have your uh, Iser line, your two pound smoke, and the uh, Phoenix Iron Feather braid. I use the braid. Um, the uh, uh, Iser line is great, great line. Uh, the disadvantage is it's a uh, uh, very light uh, test. It's only two pound, but um, both of them have that castability where you can cast something as light as a mini jig and get a decent cast with it, get some good distance. Um, uh, the Iser line uh, advantage is you don't have to tie a leader. Um, basically, you just have your line, tie your mini jig straight to the end of your line, and you're off and running. So if you break off, or anything happens, uh, you don't have to go through the, the, the pain of tying on a whole new leader. Um, the disadvantage is uh, it's two pound line. <laughs> so uh, I myself haven't had a lot of success with two pound line. I have, I have used it. Um, I end up breaking off more than I would like. Um, uh, but some guys like that. Some guys like the extra challenge. Uh, also, if you go with the two pound line, I highly recommend you get a better spinning reel with a good drag system because you're going to need it. If you hook into something a decent size or just, you know, a trout that's got a lot of fight in them, um, uh, you could break off more often than not if you don't have a good a good uh, reel with a good drag system and have it set right. Um, so it, it takes a lot more, in my opinion, a lot more skill um, uh, and a lot more, uh, you know, I guess experience, muscle memory. Uh, to fish that two pound and some guys they stick with it they they love it and that's their thing and 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 that's awesome uh, I'm not that guy <laughs> I need something with a little bit more strength I don't have as much finesse so uh, that's why the the Phoenix iron feather uh, works great for me um, it's it comes in a three four and five pound I believe uh, I use the four and the five I have the four on my uh, my vanquish and the five on my vanford um, and it's great, great line. It uh, uh, casts great. Um, uh, there's no stretch in it, so it has has a lot of sensitivity. So I can I can feel these little taps when the uh, the fish is chasing my jig. So I know he's there. Um, uh, just just awesome. Uh, disadvantages with the braid: you have to tie a leader, and that can be complicated. Especially uh, I've had instances where I was fishing out and it was very cold, very early in the morning. And I snapped off my rig and had to retie, and it is tough to retie uh, a, a leader, uh, fluorocarbon leader to braid when your hands are cold. So 
you have that. Also, you have an issue with uh, with uh, wind knots. Um, what happens with the braid? It doesn't have memory like uh, like uh, mono or fluoro. Um, since you're casting jigs, you have to be mindful of your spool because every every time you cast, you're casting something so light, it it stops putting pressure on the line that's in the spool. So every time you cast and you set your bale back, start reeling back, the line in that top portion starts getting loose. And what may happen, you may not notice it, you, sometimes you get a little loop in your spool. And if you don't notice it, you can cast out and that loop will catch on another part of the braid that's flying out of your, out of your spool. And it'll send another sp uh, loop out and then it'll knot very quickly because that braid is very, very thin, even though it's strong. It's, it's like sewing thread almost. And once it, it wraps around itself, uh, you can get a knot very quickly and have a big problem and that, that means you're, you're stripping line off your reel have to cut all that off because you're not going to be able to get the knot out because it's so thin and then uh, got to retie your leader and then for uh, a leader I, uh, I like the uh, the Runkle uh, five pound uh, fluorocoat um, really good line I use it in my bait and weight rods as well um, outstanding line uh, uh, but a lot of guys like the uh, the Seaguar, I believe it's four pound, and the the yellow label fluorocarbon. Uh, that's a really good line. I just have a bunch of the Runkle, so that's what I use. Now, uh, as far as knots, um, there are a lot of knots for joining uh, fluorocarbon to braid, so you can properly uh, tie your leader. And I'm going to leave that up to you. I'm not a knot guy. I've said it before. I don't like tying knots, so I, I try to find the simplest knots, or at least knots that I can do. Uh, and those are the ones I stick with. So what I use is, is a double uni knot uh, to attach my leaders. Uh, I'm not going to go over exactly how to do it because the video would be much, much longer. <laughs> uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to link uh, uh, a video that I used on YouTube on uh, a real good video on how to tie them easily. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a tough knot, especially if you do it a few times. It's, it's, it gets pretty easy. Um, and I can do it even, uh, even seeing it with my old eyes, you know, sometimes I got to use the readers to see the knot, but, uh, cause it's so small, but, uh, it, it's a knot that works great, but there are several knots out there. So if you don't like that knot, I would recommend, uh, going on YouTube and just, just typing in, uh, how to, uh, tie braid or, or fluoro to braid or braid or fluoro. And you'll start seeing videos on just how to tie knots and, and find the knot that works for you. Now, uh, as far as leader length. When I tie my leaders on, I usually do about five feet. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, five foot, in my mind, is good because it gives you uh, enough room to work with. So, like, if you break off a few times, want to retie your jigs or whatever. Uh, if you have a real short leader, you're going to run out of real estate real quick tying on new jigs, and then you're going to have to retie your your leader. But with the five foot, you got enough enough distance, and also you can you can leave enough out of your spool to where uh, it doesn't affect your cast. So that uh, that double uni knot, even though it's tiny, you aren't feeling it hitting your guides and it's not, not affecting your casting distance. All right, the next thing I want to tell you about is uh, something I use actually, uh, Carrie from Explore Nature's Catch turned me onto these and they are uh, uh, fly fishing snaps. And what they are, I have them pictured here. Um, it's, a, it's a little clip and they're really, really tiny because they're designed for fly fishing. Uh, but it allows you, you just tie that on and then you can switch jigs on the fly and they're so small they don't affect the action of your jig. So they're really, really cool things. Once I started using them, uh, I absolutely fell in love with them because otherwise if, if you want to change jig colors, because I'm, I'm a guy when I fish I change colors a lot. If I'm not getting bit after five or six casts and I'm pretty sure the fish are there, I'm changing colors, you know, because I, in my mind they want, I'm just not throwing what they want. Um, so those things come in real handy. You can get them anywhere on Amazon, fly fishing shops. Uh, uh, I even think Turner's probably has them. Uh, but the biggest thing to mention is is remember that they are fly fishing clips, so they're very tiny. So the size that I found that works best for me in mini jigs is size large, which feels weird ordering it. You're like, I don't want a large clip. But when it comes, a large is very, very small. The small and the medium are really tiny like so tiny i can't i don't think i can get them on a jig on there because my, my finger i got small fingers it, it's just too small uh so the large is the one that works works best for me um and 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 they're outstanding and i'll, I'll have a link in the, the description 
uh, to where you can get those on Amazon, uh, and they're really inexpensive, uh, but they're they're really great. So uh, so give them a try. All right, now we're going to move on to the fun part: practical application. Going to be on the water, uh, show you how I fish these. There's different ways to fish them at different times: one thirty second versus one sixteenth, and uh, this this is where the rubber meets the road. So uh, hope you like it. Okay, right here, Kelly's casting on out. She's using a 1 ounce mini jig. And right here, I'm going to say we're probably in about 18 feet of water. So you can see she's letting it drop before she starts to retrieve. And that's the advantage of fishing these jigs on a boat is you have a lot more room to work with. Um, now, what I really want you to pay attention to is her reel. Like, look how slow she's cranking that thing. And the rod, she's just barely tapping it. I know it looks like there's a lot of movement at the end, but that's just because it's an ultralight rod. Uh, but she's she's moving it as little as she has to, and just going very very slow. And what that does, it just keeps that jig swimming very very slowly, slightly bouncing, and it keeps it in the water column. And the longer it's in the water, more chance you have to get hit by a fish. And then right about here, boom, she's on. All right, in this clip, uh, you can see I'm obviously on the shore, uh, but I'm I'm fishing a 1 16th ounce mini jig. Um, I was fishing 1 30 seconds earlier on and, and getting fish, uh, but they seem to move out a little bit deeper at this point. So I put on a 1 16th, uh, but the interesting thing to remember is that there's a lot of weeds here, um, so you have to go a little bit faster with a 1 16th or you're going to end up in the weeds as soon as it gets closer to the shore. So if you look at my reel, you can see I'm going quite a bit faster than Kelly was. It's not an ideal speed, but uh, trying to reach those fish out a little bit deeper, that's why I'm, I'm uh, using the heavier jig, and that's why I'm going a little bit faster, just trying to keep it out of the weeds. And then you can see right here, boom, I'm hooked up. So once in a while, sometimes change up your speed. Sometimes go slow. Maybe if they aren't biting or you were getting bit and they stopped biting, try going a little bit faster. Maybe that's the, the difference and maybe that's what's uh, going to get the fish to bite. All right, in this clip, uh, I'm on the shore once again, but at a different lake. It's a little bit deeper here, but not much. And I'm using a 1 32nd ounce mini jig. Uh, so as you, can, as you can see with my reel speed, it's, it's much slower. I have a lot more room to work with. Uh, I'm not going to get as hung up as quickly as I was at the other lake. And I'm just working it as slow as I can, giving it those real light twitches, and just keep repeating that process until I feel something. And uh, right there, boom, I hook up. All right, in this clip, I'm uh, in a boat again, uh, but this time I'm using a two inch minnow and a 1 32nd ball head. Now, uh, when I fish mini jigs or minnows, I, I fish them exactly the same as far as the retrieve and all that. Um, but what was different uh, was more how the bite was dictated. It was uh, the fish seemed to really want to take it on the drop. When you're doing your normal retrieve, um, they didn't seem to want it as badly unless I paused it or let it sink a little bit after giving it a few pops. And that's kind of what you'll see happen here. As you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm reeling in real slow, giving it a few pops, and right when I'm about to stop it, uh, you can see me stop it for a half second, and boom, fish is on. All right, guys, the last technique I want to talk about is the uh, bobber and a jig uh, technique. And what you're going to need is one of these little rattle bobbers, and I'll put a picture up on the screen for you see it up close. These things are small. And all this is is a bobber, and they've taken it apart and put some little BBs in it. So it gives it a little bit extra weight, and you guys probably can't hear it, but it gives it a little bit of rattle. And what you do is put it on the line with your mini jig, give it about a three to a five foot leader, and cast it on out there as far as you can. And it's going to hit the water with the jig at the surface, and your jig is going to slowly fall till it's right underneath the bobber, just like any other bait. And what you want to do is time it, and it's usually about two or three seconds. It hits the water, let it fall for about two or three seconds. Then give your rod a couple pops, keeping your rod tip up, and this will move this along, pull the jig up, and the process starts over again. And basically what you're trying to do is get a, get a fish to hit the jig on the fall. Now what you can also do is constantly twitch these back while you're, while you're cranking really, really slow. And that works as well. Uh, another thing that helps too, and when you might employ this, is when it gets windy. You only got 32nd ounce jigs, you got one of these rattle bobbers, the wind's up a little bit, 
put one of these on, now you can cast out the good distance and you can uh, work this back and also the waves caused by the wind will help move this bobber up and down in the water column or on top of the water and it's going to bounce that jig around too. So sometimes I'll, I'll just let it sit for a while if it's windy and just let it sit in the waves and let it naturally bounce that jig and sometimes you get bit that way. So here's, uh, here's a video showing uh, the practice uh, in action. All right, and this one, uh, I'm throwing the old bobber and the mini jig out there. And uh, as you can see, I, I throw it out and I just kind of let it sit. So I'm letting that mini jig slowly fall under that bobber. And then when I think it's been about, about two or three seconds, I'll give it a little twitch with the rod. So it pulls that jig up in the water column, lets it fall back down. Uh, also, what's helpful is you can see it's a little windy, so those waves out there are bouncing that bobber around, which is also giving the jig action. So then, as you, as you can see right here, boom, bobber gets hit, and I'm on. The only uh, uh, other thing I, I would mention is uh, it's tough uh, when you're fishing these uh, to keep your line uh, uh, slack in. Because lots of times you'll see that bobber go down, and especially in the wind, you'll have a little bit of slack in your line, and you're going to miss the strike. So that's something definitely to be mindful of. All right, guys, some of you may or may not know, I'm a pro staffer for uh, Golden State Fishing. So anytime I'm using jigs, minnows, worms, mice tails, it's, uh, it's going to be Golden State Fishing stuff. Um, all of this stuff works. All this stuff catches fish. I've caught fish on most everything I have here. Um, these are just my personal favorites, especially when uh, uh, doing something on the on the jigging platform. So with the minnows, um, you got uh, gold pearl and brown, caramel apple, rainbow trout. Rainbow trout's been really hot at uh, Green Valley lately. Uh, baby brown trout. That's another one they love there. Uh, pumpkin pie and super shad super shad seems to work everywhere <laughs> that's a real good real good go-to um, and, and either on the on the 16th or the uh, 132nd ball head just depends you know like I said the trout are gonna dictate what they want each day uh, so you got to kind of figure that out where 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 you're getting bid at what depth of the water and what speed your retrieve is and then as far as mini jigs uh, super shad Mardi Gras, Rainbow Trout, Captain America, Colombian Bam Bam, Purple Rain, the Kobe, good old yellow and white, that works everywhere, every time of day, uh, the Hulk, and uh, Gold, Pearl, and Brown. Uh, those are my top producers as far as jigging goes. And then uh, I can't uh, forget uh, the inchworms. A lot of guys don't fish these. Um, uh, an inchworm on a 132nd uh, ball head that Golden State puts out can be deadly, especially when the bite gets slow and you know the trout are there and they're being a little bit finicky. Maybe they're getting tired of seeing the same jigs or minnows over and over again. Throw one of these little bad boys on there and bring it back real slow and the bite usually livens up quite nicely. So if you want to check out uh, all the other uh, custom baits uh, Estevan has over there at Golden State, uh, I got the website right here. And uh, if you enter uh, code CSPANKER at checkout, you get 10% off. So that's code CSPANKER at checkout, and you get 10% off. And if you ever have any questions on, on what minnows or what jigs are working for me currently, I'll, I'll be more than happy to answer it if you hit me up on my Instagram or, or, uh, or on the, the old YouTube channel. All right, guys, there you have it. That is uh, everything I have learned so far uh, taking this journey into fishing mini jigs. And uh, so far, it's an absolute blast. It's, it's a really fun way to catch trout. Uh, that's why I want to make sure uh, you guys have the opportunity to, to try it out uh, because it's uh, there's something about working those lures back and, and feeling that fish bite and you know, kind of knowing you tricked them. <laughs> wasn't wasn't just you uh, sitting there waiting for something to bite at your bait. You you actually had a hand in making that fish bite, and and to me it's uh, it's awesome. So if you ever have any questions or comments, make sure you you share them. I love answering them, and uh, uh, check out my Instagram at Seaspanker Outdoors. A uh, good way to get a hold of me is to uh, message me right on there. And uh, until next time, tie lines.